Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Radio Truth broadcast. This broadcast is a live Bible question and answer program where you, the radio listeners, at any point in time uh, during this half hour broadcast, you can pick up your phones and dial the number 281-837-2222 with any Bible questions or comments you'd like to make, and we'll give you book, chapter, and verse for all of your Bible questions, and we'd love to listen to your comments as well. April the 8th through the 11th. Uh, gospel meeting at 4211 North Main uh, Street in Baytown, Texas. Go ahead and mark your calendars. You're able to support the meeting. If you have any uh, other questions about it, we'll be talking about it more in the near future. That being said, if you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of 1 Peter. Uh, the chapter will be number 4, 1 Peter. The chapter will be number 4. And we're going to do part 2 of uh, a subject we started on last week, and that is judgment uh, must begin at the house of God. Judgment uh, must begin at the house of, of God. In 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning at verse number 17, the apostle Peter says, For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Amen. And if it first began at us, what shall the end be of them? Now get this, that obey not the gospel of God. I'd like to read verse 18 as well. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, mm -hmm. he says, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Now that's 1 Peter 4, 17 and 18. We uh, began this subject on last week, and I believe it's an important subject because uh, there are many in the religious world who has the mindset, the notion that uh, the Bible says that we are not to make judgments. And I'm here to tell you, we're here to tell you this afternoon, that that is simply not so. Amen. We, are, as individuals who are in the body of Christ, we do have the responsibility to judge each other's work, we have the responsibility to judge each other's doctrine. And not only ours, we also are to judge those on the outside, whether or not they are in line with uh, the doctrine of Christ and what the apostles have taught. Mm -hmm. You know, a famous scripture, a predominant famous scripture that folk use to try to solidify that we're not to judge is Matthew 7 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And I'd like us to turn there. This is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And I want to uh, make sure that we understand that as we read Matthew chapter 7, that you have to keep all of the scriptures in the context uh, that they are written in and that they were spoken in. In Matthew 7, the Bible says, judge not that you be not judged. Most people read Matthew 7, 1, and at that point, they close their Bibles. Jesus is not through speaking yet as he makes these statements. He has a purpose behind the words that we read here in verse number 1. He goes on to say, for, he explains why. He said what he said in verse 1. He said, with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in your brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in your own eye? Or how will you say to your brother, let me pull out the mote out of your, out of your eye, and behold, look at this, you got a beam in your own eye. He says, you hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of your own eye, and then you shall see clearly to cast the mote out of your brother's eye. What I want Amen. you to see here is that Jesus is not dealing with don't judge at all. Mm. Jesus is dealing with the time yes. that the judgments are being made. In other words, you make sure that you are getting yourself right, that you are making efforts to live right, to do right, to follow the doctrine of Christ. Therefore, and only then can you see clearly to help your brother who may be in fault. And so we have a responsibility to judge works, to judge actions of those who profess to be disciples of Christ. He also goes on in verse number six. He says, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before the swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. And so here, Jesus said, there has to be a judgment made. You have 
to make a judgment between what's a dog and what's a hog. Mm -hmm. And so there's judgments that Jesus says has to, in fact, be made. You have to determine who you're going to spend time with and, and sharing the gospel and working with, who's trying to do right, who's trying to live right. Otherwise, you could be spending unnecessary efforts and energy in someone who simply do not care. And so we do have to make judgments. We see that throughout uh, the Bible, the Word of God. Brother Javier Frias, if my memory serves me right, did a wonderful job talking last week about the man uh, who in, I believe, First uh, Corinthians chapter 5, or did you use 6? He used chapter 6. He used the, the man, the people there, where they were to make judgments among themselves, right. um, to make judgments on matters that concern the body of Christ there. When you go to First Corinthians 5, you will notice that Paul told them there that they were to judge the man that was sleeping with his father's wife. Right. They had to correct him. They had to discipline him. They had to tell him what he needed to hear so that he could, in fact, have his soul saved. They were told to hand him over to Satan. And so the point we're bringing about is judgments need to be made, but the judgments that need to be made are righteous judgments. Now, let's be, uh, Brother Ozan, yes, I want to be, I want to just say something else before I toss it to you real quick. I want to go back to 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 17. What we do on this program is we make judgments uh, based upon the word of God uh, concerning those who will be saved and those who will not be saved. Now, Peter is very clear. He says, first judgment is going to begin at the house of God. And then he says, now, he goes on to say, though, what will it be for those that obey not the gospel yes. of God? If judgment begins with us, and we are, and we have been over the last couple of weeks, judging things that have been going on in the body of Christ. There are a lot of things that are happening in the body of Christ that is veering people away uh, from doing and being all that God would have us uh, to be in the body of Christ. And it's a shame. We have congregations who refuse to set up church government, elders and deacons. We have churches who are preaching doctrines that are contrary to the word of God, telling people if they've been divorced for a reason other than fornication that they cannot get married again. We talked about those various subjects. We got churches of Christ who are trying to sound like instruments of music in their worship practices. We've talked about that on this program. We got churches of Christ who gather and say that it's a necessity that when you take the Lord's Supper. Everybody must drink out of one cup. We have that going on in the dock, in the body of Christ. These are things that we in fact have torn down and we have talked about. And we got brethren who are coming up with titles and wearing doctors. We've talked about that. Religious titles, having preachers' anniversaries, calling them appreciation days. These are things that we make righteous judgments about in the body of Christ. Because these things need to be torn down they need to be stopped. They need to be put to halt so that souls can, in fact, be saved whenever Jesus Christ comes back. Uh, but it needs to be understood, too. He goes on to say, the end of them that obey not. The, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel? Rest assured, my friend, if you don't obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're not going to heaven. There is only one way to be born again. And I want you to make sure everybody understands this. You can't become a Christian different than I became a Christian. And I can't become a Christian than any of the Christians I read about on the pages of inspiration. There is only one way to be born again. Just like there's one way for you to be physically born. I can tell everybody listening to this program how they came into this world. Uh, a man and a woman got together, and nine months prior, you and I came out of a womb. How do I know that, not even meeting you? Because God has it designed to where there is only one way to be born physically. And I stop by to tell you, God only has one way designed today that men are born spiritually. You have to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everyone becomes a Christian by hearing the gospel, believing it, repenting of their sins, uh, confessing with their mouth the Lord Jesus, and being baptized in water for the remission of their sin. Amen. These items that I've just listed are actions of faith. It's not faith only. There are some actions that needs to be done with our faith in order to produce the fruit of what's called a Christian. Amen. 
And so if you don't obey that form of doctrine, I'm here to tell you, based on the word of God, we are making a judgment that you are not saved, that you are on your way to hell, that you are lost. If you are not a member of the church, the people of God that you read about in the Bible, listen to me very clearly, you are lost and your end will not be a good end. Whenever Jesus comes back with his holy angels. Amen. Now, the number of the call is 281-837-2222. At this time, I'll talk to Brother Ozan, who will uh, elaborate more on the subject. Brother Ozan. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Henry. God bless you. One of the things we have to understand is, is that we have individuals who try to uh, play with the Word of God. I mean, welcome our audience that's listening. Uh, you know, one of the biggest issues we're dealing with is men have always tried to say what a word means and how it means something different. I want to explain something to you that God created language. You know, there's nothing you can do to change that. You make yourself look very, very embarrassing before the world when you try to think that man created language or somehow he orchestrates, or somehow he handles uh, the language. I want you to look at Genesis. This is very important because a lot of the battles that I see myself into and with others is saints try to play on words. Genesis 11, one, the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Do you understand that God created the language? Do you understand that no one taught Adam and Eve? They didn't go to school. They were created knowing language. Is that not enough for you to understand language comes from God? And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east and they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven. Now they're talking about where God is at. That's why it becomes a problem. Not just building a skyscraper. And they have something to say to God. And they're going to explain in the text. He says, and um, who's taught me to reach out, and let us make us a name. We're not happy with the name he's given us. Uh, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Well, why are they going to go to the tower? I'm going to heaven. What are we going to tell God? We're going to tell him something along the lines. We want a name that we made. You can't even remake your own image. All this, why don't you understand something about this story? You've heard it from a denominational viewpoint. You need to hear it from the law's viewpoint. This is a in-your-face approach to the Lord. We're going to make our own image, our own name. And, and we're going to decide basically where we want to go. See, because we've got to remember something. The law determines where man goes. And, and, and he's of one blood, but he determines his boundaries. So it says in verse 5, the Lord said, come to the city. And he says, to see and the tower which the children of men build it. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and thou confound their language. Did y'all get that? Gonna confound it. Confuse it. Break it apart. Make it multiple. That they may not understand one another's speech. So now, you don't have everybody going off with different, but he says, I'm going to split them up. So there's going to be some people talking the same thing. You run across a guy, hey, you understand me, okay, and then you'll be able to live on the earth and work together, but you're not, that group that's trying to do this building, not happening with you. You're going to say, reach for a hammer, and he's going to look at you crazy, and he's going to run, everybody's going to be confused. What's going on? How did I get here? We could, we were just talking to each other a minute ago. It's all in our life now, and that causes confusion. And what does the frightening without God man do? Like all of us, run. And that's what the Lord knew what they would do. And so he said clearly, so the Lord scattered them abroad and from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name called Babel, because the Lord had did confound the language of all the earth. From thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon face of all the earth. I want to stop here. We've got a guy that gives Brother Frizz, who is the majority individual answers the questions that come from our YouTube uploads and, and deals with information that even comes concerning message you've heard of Will Clayton. He is the minister of it. Uh, the elders oversee that. He does a fantastic job. Man. And so we got a guy that's a member of the church, so he says. And he sends lengthy, lengthy, lengthy 
rhetoric paragraph nonsense. And the thing that, that bothers me is he's worse than a denominational guy. And if you listen, you know I'm talking about you, brother. And one of the statements you said, which is, which is discouraging and blasphemous, is that we can't use strongs. That's like me telling you, you tell me what a circle means, and I tell you, you can't use Webster. You know what your problem is? Your ignorance supersedes your spirituality. Mm. You are ignorant even in the realm of humanity. Do you not understand that lingua franca right now the biggest is English? It is a language spoken by multiple dialects that use English to interact with business, commerce, and other things. You need to understand something. Without a dictionary, dear friend, we don't know what nothing means. You can't call a dog a cat. So for you to rise up with those long, elongated paragraphs of rhetoric, please stop. Amen. If you can't talk from the Bible, we don't care what you know. Because you know nothing. You can't add nothing to us or any other saint on the earth. And I'll use Galatians 2 to quote myself. As long as it reads from the Bible, you can't add nothing to us unless you're going to read from the Bible. You need to understand, none of you, unless you do speak the original Greek, the vernacular, Koine Greek, you do not determine what the answer is to that meaning in English unless the Greeks have agreed what it means in their language. Every word you look up, Greek, Hebrew, Chaldean, Latin, it doesn't matter. Every word you look up, Arabic, Aramaic, it is told to you in your language what it means. When we look up the word study, and you try to make that word apply only to meditate, you've gotten beside yourself. Because the word means to look at and read and study books. So that's what the book you're supposed to be reading daily is the Bible. You think you're God. That's what you think you are. Not only this guy that writes those long paragraphs, some of you. See, we don't think we're God. We repeat God's word. The difference in us and you, you think you're God. You think your intellect, your doctoral thesis you wrote, and the other nonsense is a part of your life. You think you can supersede the language creator? Do you not know if God does not have Strong's, Webster's, others before that tell you what their words mean in their dollar? Do you understand he couldn't have picked any language to speak to us from? God chose the lingua franca of Koine Greek because everybody knew it. It's a business language. For you to touch that, you make yourself look so ignorant. And you know what's sad? A Baptist preacher, we'd have to agree with him that you don't know what you're talking about on a literal meaning of a word. That's what's wrong with some of you saints. You've gotten beside yourself. See, the difference in us and you, we stay low, face to the ground, serving God. And when we're wrong, we'll tell you, we have erred, forgive us, we made a mistake on this, we were wrong. We're never going to preach no false doctrine like some of you. So I am done. The number to call is 281-837-2222. Brother, thank you, Brother Ozan. And, uh, and I'd like to just uh, 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 read what Paul actually brought up about uh, what Brother Ozan had just said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Listen at Paul's demeanor and attitude. Uh, which I believe is the same as what Brother Ozan has just voiced. He said, "Now, brethren, First Corinthians two. When I came to you, I came not with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. And my speech, that's words, and my preaching, that's words, was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith." should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Mm. How be it, he said, we, Paul talking about him and the other apostles, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, Amen. nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Yes. And so that's what it's all about. 
Uh, let's stay in the Bible. Let's let's Amen. say what the apostles and what Jesus has said. Stop trying to outsmart God. Stop trying to help God. Try stop trying to impress yourself. Try, stop trying to steal God's glory. Stop trying to come up with something different, something new. Uh, and but just stick with the Word of God. Stop trying to trying to invent new truths. Yes. See, you can't invent truth. What we do is we simply discover truth. Amen. And that is found in the word of God. And there are no holes, my friend, in truth. Amen. That's why we on this program, we hold the Bible and the Bible only as our standard of authority. Amen. And that being rightly divided. 281-837-2222. Oh, this time I'll talk to Brother Javier for you. Brother Javier. Thank you, brother. You know, wonderful, wonderfully put. You know, when you look at 2 John chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 9, it says, Whosoever transgresses, and abide not in the doctrine of Christ, he has not God. Amen. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. If any there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. And so the books that we have here in the New Testament uh, have instructions, commandments, necessary inferred, and the things that were given to Jesus Christ from his father and the things that Christ gave unto his apostles are the things that we have to do to make heaven our home. Judgment must begin at the house of God. Amen. And if it first begin at us, what should be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? They'll be Amen. cast out into the lake of fire. That is, that is what their end will be. Now, for those in the body of Christ, Jesus said when he was on earth, he said his angels will come and gather those in his kingdom that offend, and he will cast them out of his kingdom, and they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. They'll be cast in the outer uh, darkness uh, forever and ever. That was reserved originally for the devil and his angels, but now there is a, a different individual or different type of people that will be entered in with the angels, which is mankind, which have uh, sought after the works and the inventions of Lucifer, the angel that was cast out with his angels, and have agreed with the works and the actions that he has invented. And so we, we deal with this because the, all have sinned on this earth. However, why are there going to be some men and some women that go to heaven and some men and some women that go to hell if all individuals, all mankind has sinned. The only one that has not sinned is Jesus Christ. The reason why there will be some in the church who make it in the house of God and some that will not make it is because choice. Uh, in this lifetime, they made a decision to repent and change from the doctrine that they once followed and, so and seek and obey the doctrine of Christ, carrying their crosses all the way until the end. Amen. Now, we've dealt with different subjects. Judgment must begin at the house of God, what we're dealing with today. We talked about it last week. And what will come in the judgment, uh, those ministers and elders or deacons or listen to my voice, even saints of God, is the subject of marriage, divorce, remarriage, is a subject that the Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians 7, Matthew 19, 9, all the way down to verse 12. Some, some of you stop at Matthew 19, 9, but it continues uh, the discourse. Amen. And so the idea is that if you do not judge that correctly, uh, saints, uh, leaders as well, then the idea is that if you add to God's word, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 30 and the book of Deuteronomy and the book of Revelations, the last chapter 22, that you're not supposed to add or subtract unto his word. Amen. And so when a saint that has the seal of God on their foreheads comes to you with a scenario if they've been divorced and you give them the wrong answer, uh, you can't get remarried, or, well, you've been married before, or they let's say they did get remarried, or they got baptized, they've been divorced before they were baptized, and then they got baptized, and you tell them they can't be an elder, or they can't be a deacon, because before they were baptized, before they were sealed, before they were sanctified, they were divorced. The idea is that you just gave a judgment not based on the doctrine of Christ, but it's a judgment and the precept that is upon your fear and a lack of knowledge of the scriptures mm -hmm. on how to divide that individual, Amen. divide the scriptures to help that individual right. to learn truth. And so their mind can be not captive, in a sense, in their conscience before God's eyesight, but free in the sense of now God has alleviated this from me and he will not condemn me to hell based off the scriptures that have been read 
concerning me being washed by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. And so the idea is that judgment must begin at the house of God. That's just one subject I dealt with. There's many subjects in the body of Christ uh, that need to be corrected, need to be learned and read so you can help others, leaders, can help others uh, get their life right before God, before the judgment even comes. Mm -hmm. Now, those who uh, are outside of the body of Christ understand that Christ is not even with you. You don't even believe in Christ. You believe in a different Christ according to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, where Paul mentioned that there was a different uh, Jesus. That's a different Christ sure. that is contrary to the, to the one in the Bible. And the Bible says in John chapter 3, uh, sometimes we read verse 16, where it says in that particular verse, it says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, the devils believe in God, but guess what they do according to the book of James? They tremble, but they do not have the opportunity or the chance to repent and obey the gospel. But the idea is that those who believe have to not just believe that he exists because the devils believe in tremble, but you have to believe and obey him. In other words, believe what he said. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's his purpose of sending his son. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth uh, not is condemned already. So if you don't believe that Jesus Christ came and he died according to the scriptures, he was buried and resurrected according to the scriptures, he built his church according to Isaiah 2, Daniel 2, and he said, On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If you don't believe what came out of his mouth, that he said he was going to build his church, and it was going to be one, if you don't believe that, then you don't believe him in that promise that he made. Therefore, if you don't believe that, you won't follow what he said to go to, Amen. the church that he did say he was going to build. That's right. And therefore, in verse 18, where he says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. So the scripture is teaching us audience that you are condemned already why because you don't believe what he has said out of his mouth it says because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten son of god and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil brother Oz mentioned language a uh, language and so the devil has created also a language which is denominationalism which is these variety of congregations and churches that were made way before our birth way before our parents' birth, way before our grandparents' birth, which, which are called Catholics in 606 AD in Rome, where the Roman Empire fabricated this, this nonsense called the Catholic Church, then the Lutheran Church, Methodist, Presbyterian, Baptist. And so these entities have a, a doctrine that does not match the scriptures. And therefore, when you look and you divide the scriptures and you try to find that answer in the Bible, you cannot find it. And that's for that you, through the process of elimination, through the gospel's truth, you eliminate, el eliminate those cubic zirconias, those wannabe diamonds Amen. that are not the body of Christ Amen. or the, the church that Jesus said he was going to build. Now, that's for those who, that are outside of the body of Christ. And those for inside of the body of Christ, he's coming for us uh, first. Judgment must begin at the house of God. There's many things that Brother Henry mentioned concerning what what God will judge, and what the problems that are in the body of Christ need to be removed. Now, if I'm an heir, Brother Ozan or Brother Henry's an heir, please call in. The number is 281-837-2222. Show us scripture. If we're wrong, we'll correct it live Amen. on broadcast, and we'll repent, and we'll get in line with what saith the Lord. But if not, if you see that what we're saying is truth, then audience, please take heed to it. And if it's not readable in the scriptures, then it's addition or it's subtraction. I'm going to call us 218 Amen. 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 Uh, Javier, thank you. Wonderful job. We're about, our time is just about well spent. I want to just read a few verses here real quickly. If you're hearing, and I want you to pay close attention. I've got about a minute left. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9 says this. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. These are judgments Paul makes. And this they hold true today. He said, be not deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, feminine, nor abusing themselves with mankind, thieves, covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners. Yet what he says shall inherit the kingdom of God. I know we live in a world who wants us to tolerate stuff, uh, wants us to tolerate their sinful action. But I'm here to tell you, we're going to make a judgment. Same-sex marriage is wrong. Amen. You die, you go to hell uh, being in, in, in relationships with a man with a man and a woman with a woman. 
drunkards. They will die and they will go to hell. These are righteous judgments. Yes. And we can give these judgments because the Bible, the Word of God inspired by the Holy Spirit, have already made those judgments. The judgment must begin at the house of God. What shall the end be of those who obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ? We lead the faithful yes. saints of God in Romans 16, 16. The churches of Christ salutes you. And thank you for that verse yeah. from Paul, because that's what Paul says. I came and showed. I was perfect. I held my hand like a touchdown when you started Amen. reading. That is the verse. Because this is this is something to think. Even when we were talking to people, when we talked about talking to someone last week, they want to play with the word study, brother. Yeah. See, when we get this English word, that English word has to tell us what that Greek word is talking about. Right. We don't speak Greek. Greek. There is no scrutiny about the scribe. Paul said he just don't have a position in the church. Right. Where's the scribe? He is critical. Without the scribe, no more Bibles. Right. There's no yeah. more. All the scribes can write. There's no more books. Right. Moses write, but others write behind. They're just scribes. But they have no post in the church. Back then, they were given credentials because the Pharisees had there, Sadducees had there. But it's like, okay, we it's about a book being studied according to the Word of God. And you must have his spirit. So scribe, either you get baptized, and then you can be a part whether you write again, right. or you have no part nor a lot in this. And that's what they're not understanding, bro. One of the biggest things, I, every time you're talking with a joker, he'll rise up and start saying that's not what that word means. He's read what a scholar says about right. it. But the scholar is a blasphemer also. Right. And we got brethren in the church that go against that. And they want to try to select what meaning is to be used in a word. But they have to understand. Christ tells us what adultery means in his context right. based on the law of Moses. Yeah. And he explains it's the same thing in the New Testament and that you marry someone while your spouse is still living. Romans 7, 1 through 4 validate. 24 chapter Deuteronomy validate. And it is clear that person was always known as an adulterer. And, I don't, and an adulterer, they didn't always. realize that. Just because they were getting a writing of the book did not mean you're they off the hook. It the means book. that if your heart isn't right, come judgment, you're not going to enter in on the Moses, oh, before Christian Moses, Christ. or the Christian dispensation. And this is what these brothers on the set up trying to play with the word. Well, brother, I'm serious. All we got to do is if they pull it up, we got to know English, though. Amen. We got some people that want to make us so dumb. We right. don't even know well, English. English well, then we can't speak to no man. Like Paul said, we're most miserable of all men. Tomorrow, we're going to surely die. But well, we can't talk to nobody. So, yeah. so how do we function in business? A person understood baptizo is to dip. But the original is to get stuck under the wall, a boat. Mm. Okay, but that's not where we're going. So the right. word comes from that to do and lift up. That's the word we're doing. We're not going to drown them. Yeah. So we don't right. stick them in there, hold them down, and never come chain him, lift him back up. So they knew what that meant. And they knew, okay, so what do you do? I mean, water? Can you, and the sins removed? Oh, they scoff and mock. Yeah. Others say we want to heal more. Yeah. The Greeks Man. were happy. They said, well, That's we right. can be saved. Because they've always heard from the Jews. Y'all have, no yeah. have no hope. You have no hope. So it's our turn now. And they said, we want to hear more, Paul. They came back. That's and right. who got mad? The saints, mm. so-called, yeah. on the bows of yeah. And wanted to destroy them. Went ahead and other cities. Hey, these guys are trying to turn y'all city around. And that's the same problem we deal with now. That guy, that, that guy eats up a page on YouTube with, with, with just rhetoric. God bless free us for his patience with yeah, this guy. This guy is a pain and a thorn in your flesh. And you're telling us we can't use strong. So so I'd like to ask him, hey genius, where's your dictionary you wrote? Because yeah, obviously you're God. Mm -hmm. You gotta be God because we can't use what the man that God has allowed to write what physical meanings mean. That's why the power of the different tongue was needed. Paul had to come in their tongue and talk to them. He could speak other tongue. Everybody, look, even though English is a lingua franca with the spans of gold, everybody don't speak English. So when you get to a remote person, they gotta speak English. Okay, what's his name? Paul was given a power to talk to him in his language. A person in the language of the icon. He got to understand, okay, so I'm gonna talk to him. Now you're gonna tell the icon he don't know what his word means. That isn't what study means. You can't use the writings of the icon. What else he gonna use? This is the only dictionary. 
the Holy Spirit gave the apostles so that everybody can heal. Everybody. And they own Thank the land. So I'm going to tell the Egyptians, you can't, you can't <laughs> use what, what you call Potiphar's priest wrote. You can't, wait a minute, hold on, man. That's a dictionary we use. It means this in our language. See, that's when you know you got some, this guy wants to be someone. Right, exactly. Right? He's trying to make a he name for himself. He wants to be sure. someone. Yeah, that's why his problem is. Yeah. He wants to look down at us. Because we don't want to be nobody like him. Mm -hmm. And we're not with his cronies Amen. in his area of neck of the wood. Amen. And we're not with him. So he can't figure it out. He's not with the cronies. He's not with him. He's not with our enemies. We're with God. Amen. He's against all y'all. Amen. Yeah, Amen. 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 